Hey Wilder folks, Alicia here. This week's video is my top five tips to make skiing ice easier. Now I got this video idea from a friend actually. She's coming down to ski at Castle this weekend and we haven't had snow in 24 days and counting. So it is very icy out there. Now she called me and she asked, should I cancel my trip? Should I delay it? And I told her, come down anyways, let's have some fun on ice. It's gonna make us a better skier in the long run because it's gonna give us immediate feedback as to how our movements are affecting our balance on snow. And if you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button and like this video if these tips are good for you. I'm a level two ski coach and a personal trainer and this channel is all about getting you fit in the gym for adventures outside of it. All right, let's dive into my first tip and that is to make sure that the majority of your weight is on your outside ski. Now this is a pretty common tip, but it's common because it just works. You wanna feel when you're skiing down the hill, like you're almost lifting that top or uphill ski and you're pressing into your downhill ski. This is gonna put more pressure on your edge. It's gonna reduce chatter, which is when your ski starts going like this. It's gonna keep a grip and help you to dig into that ice instead of sliding away. Now, you'll know you're not putting enough weight on your outside ski if your skis spread apart while you're skiing on ice or if you hip out, so you slip out and hit your hip on the snow when you're skiing. And that can be pretty scary. So remember, if you feel fear, more pressure to the outside ski. My second tip is actually in the gym. So you can work on it during the week and it's gonna help you out on the weekends or whenever you get to the hill. And that is to work on your core strength. I have a bit of a controversial belief when it comes to skiing technique. I don't believe your feet or your skis are actually your base. I believe that if you're able to stabilize your torso and have a strong core, then no matter what happens underneath your feet, you're controlling your center of mass and you're gonna stay balanced on your ski. The way to work on core strength is going to be in a standing position where you're moving your limbs while stabilizing your core, and also individually in a horizontal position working on specific muscles. Now, uh, we have an eight week pre-ski dumbbell fitness program if you're interested in having the best season of your life. You can check that out in the link below if you want more guidance. But I also might put together a video specifically on core exercises that benefit skiing. And if you're interested in that, please pop a comment below so I know that the video is worth making. Tip number three, it doesn't have to do with your body or your technique, but rather your equipment. If your edges aren't sharp, every run on ice is going to be so much harder and you're gonna find that you're slipping instead of gripping. Now, tuning your own skis is actually pretty simple and only takes a couple pieces of equipment to get your edges in shape. But if you haven't done that before or you aren't comfortable, you can always take your skis into a ski shop before a weekend that's particularly icy. The reason sharp edges are important is because the more pressure we can get into the snow, the more likely we're gonna be able to grip. And so if we have a finer point that we're putting all our power into, it's gonna be easier for us to keep a grip. Imagine going across a parking lot or trying to stop on an icy parking lot in a pair of slippers versus a pair of ice skates. Tip number four is back to technique. I want you to try this drill out. It's a super simple drill that's gonna work on separation. Separation in skiing is just having your upper body and torso pointed a different direction from your lower body and skis. And it's really important because it makes it easier to keep your center of mass balanced as you turn your feet underneath you. So with this drill, we're just exaggerating that movement. We're pointing our body down the hill and rotating our feet and femurs beneath us to get those skis pointing one side of the hill and then to the other side of the hill. Try this on gentler terrain to start off with and then try it on steeper terrain as well. It's gonna give you more confidence when you do start sliding because you know what it feels like and you know how to stay centered even if wild things are happening underneath your feet. And my fifth and final tip is to not avoid ice. It can be tempting to just stay away from the ski hill when it's icy out, but I promise you that the feedback you get from skiing on ice is gonna help you have more fun in all snow conditions. So it is worth yeah. going out there anyways. Remember to maybe start on an easier run than you normally would go on, and then as you're feeling confident and as you're gaining competence, try and increase the difficulty by going on steeper runs. And after you've been out skiing on ice, make sure you do mobility at the end 
of the day. A small investment in keeping yourself mobile is gonna pay dividends in terms of enjoying a longer season and more seasons skiing. I have found that my clients particularly get sore in their quads and their ankles after a day out skiing. And so I'm gonna link below to a quad mobility and an ankle mobility for you to try. Have a wilder week and I'll see you guys here next week.